following episode contains language and descriptions of violence and self-harm. It may not be appropriate for all listeners, but it was my life. Discretion is advised. What up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Roll Call with Chappie. I got a tank in here for you guys. My man, Davey Michael. Um, I'm going to let him introduce himself to you, but he is an absolute stud, and this is going to be fun today. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on here. Absolutely. Yeah, Davey Michael, um, you know, been on NBC Titan Games. Um, Bang Energy athlete. Yeah. And if any of you guys want to get 25% off, uh, go to bangenergy.com and use discount code Davey25. Bam, there you go. Yeah. So thank you for being here, man. And I want to get into the upbringing for you. I know you said you didn't have too much trouble growing up in the childhood, but what was childhood like for you? Yeah, childhood, I was very Were you always huge blessed. like this? Um, no, okay. not necessarily. Um, always strong because I grew up on a farm. Gotcha. But uh, good Where upbringing, at? North Dakota. Yep. Farm. Yeah. I uh, grew up on a farm, homeschooled. We ate our own food out of our own garden. No way. My dad's beef because wow. he had, you know, livestock. So he had, to, he knew what he was doing with his beef then, clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we kind of grew up with a lot of organic food. Um, we worked, you know, a lot outside. Um, good upbringing, solid parents, uh, four siblings. Okay. So there's five of us. Wow. Yeah, like I said, we are homeschooled up until high school, and then I went to a private school. Where's all the siblings at? Are they out here or North Carolina? No, we're all scattered. Okay. Yeah, so two of them are in North Carolina. The, uh, one's a special force. Wow. Yeah, trainer. He's now training people that become special forces. Wow. And then another uh, does cyber. Um, security. Security in D.C. That's smart stuff. Yeah, he's a, he's, it's funny because he kind of looks similar to me, but he's a geek. Really? So he actually, they actually pick on him because everybody <laughs> looks like they're a geek, you know? Yeah, for sure. But then my brother comes in and he's all, you know, fit Do you think that taught you, uh, like, grit and hard work, like, growing up like that on a farm, oh, being homeless sure. and stuff like 100%. that? Helped out a ton? Yeah. Yeah. Dad was very hard on us, which I, we all appreciate now. At the time, we're like, oh, this sucks. You know, dad's yelling at us. Yeah, and, tell me how hard on you, your dad was. <sighs> well, he would, uh, he would yell. You know, pretty loud. (laughs) He never hit us. He wasn't abusive. Okay. Now, he did spank us, but I remember the one thing he always did is he would always say, I'm doing this because I love you. Yeah. And then he would spank us. It's hilarious. I don't know why it's so funny thinking of Davey Michael getting spanked right now, but that's all that's going to my head is you're getting spanked. Even you saying the word spanked is hilarious. Yeah. (laughs) I don't think your dad would be trying to spank you now if he saw you. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, he disciplined us, and I feel like that really plays into the gym, fitness, if you're if you're trying to start a business because you got to fight your way through life absolutely and if you play victim no matter who you are you're not going to go far absolutely good it's point, hard though. for everybody yeah. you know everybody wants to say anybody wants to say oh it's because of this that i can't do that or well we're we all struggle you know it's, it's up you limit here. yourself mentally 100 yeah, yeah 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 for sure so, i mean i told myself i couldn't get a job when i got out of prison just because i told myself I couldn't get a job. And then I go get a job, make six figures, you know, in America, the you second I finally started anything. doing the work instead of making excuses. And that's yeah. literally how the world works, you know, 100%. Cool. So let's get into, um, after homeschooling, what, what happened 18 years old ish? Yeah. So 18 years old, uh, I was a class of very small 28 people and <laughs> yeah. every single one of them, uh, had a, you know, career in plan college, okay. this and that. I was the only one that was undecided. And did I you have any idea college. what you wanted to do? Not really, but I knew that I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. Did you play sports and stuff, or you couldn't? I did. Homeschooled, huh? No, no. Well, okay. no, I did go to that private school from okay. freshman year to senior year. Okay. Yeah. So um, I did play sports. I played football, track. I wrestled. I did basketball for one year. So I kind of did them all. But high school, I was more thinner. I was okay. taller, big bone, but I was thin. Yeah. So I was. You're probably the one guy big. that ever, all the parents were like, "This dude is going to be huge when he finally <laughs> finally fills out, right?" Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but skinny, you know. Um, but yeah, and then uh, yeah, and then from there, I decided I'm gonna just go get a. I'm just gonna go get a job somewhere and see how that plays out. Okay. So I found a good construction job, and um, that's where you learn the construction you do now. Yeah, man. And then that kind of got me into like, hey, I can maybe start a business and you know own a construction company, which is called Muscle Tile now. I go and I renovate bathrooms, kitchens for people here in yeah. Scottsdale, and uh, it's it's great money, and it, you know it's a lot of work. But it's good because I can have my own hours. You know, Absolutely. It's, yeah, my own you business. You some to work, too. I see your stuff out there, too. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so um, after you get the job, then what did you do? Are you still in North Dakota? Um, yes. So I was in North Dakota until I was 26, got married wow. um, a few years before that. Okay. But then at 26, then so I moved So you met your wife out there in, in North Dakota? Yes. Cool. Yep, met her in North Dakota. I um, actually met her at 18. Really? And I've been with her till now, and That's I'm 32. Cool. So That's we've cool. Been, yeah. 
been together for a I don't long know time. you can you can tell the ones I feel like I, clearly Instagram's a lot of fluff and all the type of bull crap but you can tell you guys have a good relationship I appreciate you're it. really good you can see that stuff, yeah you know, yeah so I mean cool. every relationship's gonna have their their hardships and struggles and we've had our ups and downs but the thing is you know we we, we stick with it we and work it's tough on when it. you got a big following like you and you're a good it looking is. big dude to have to be married and stuff so I clearly uh, yeah ruin some stuff for me but I can tell you you handle it correctly so I'll just give you some props I on that appreciate still, which is it, cool man. yeah I, I try really hard to yeah cool. so whose idea was it to come out to Arizona was it yours or hers it was kind of both of ours really yeah any other place were you thinking of or was it just Arizona yeah we looked in Colorado Florida you're in the cold and let me think you're thinking like where is the yes. hottest place we can get there where yeah. there's oh, snow like dude, this all the way we were like <laughs> let's get out of it. it was so cold so in North Dakota um I, have you ever been I've been to South Dakota okay so this is what North Dakota winters are I, if you've ever walked into a deep freeze, like an actual freezer, it, I'm not lying, it is that cold in the winter. Um, our na our temps are sometimes negative 30, negative 40. You're kidding me. And, I mean, it is so cold that your bones actually hurt. So, Like, what do you do? Like, how do, uh, You work. I can't even comprehend that. That's all you do, you work. So that's what I did. It, it distracted me, so I didn't get in trouble because I worked. Yeah. I worked out. You're too cold to get And I in went trouble. to bed. It was too cold to do <laughs> yeah, anything outside. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, gang man on those street corners. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people do drink. Um, yeah. I guess oh, yeah. per capita, it's one of the highest drinking states. Makes sense if you can do it in the house. all you can do inside, yeah. But I, I tried to stay away from that as much as possible. Okay. You know? So let's let's get on this whole Arizona move, because clearly I think that's what transcended your life. So yes. how did this all go down? Yeah, so actually it's a funny story, because... Um, <laughs> so in Bismarck, I was getting big. Uh, it's called Bismarck, North Dakota. It's the capital of North Dakota. Okay. I was getting really big. And size wise or size wise. Okay. Yes. Um, not really social media wise, but I was kind of starting to grow on my social media okay. too, because, because I had a lot of people say, I didn't even want to make an Instagram. My brothers, some friends were like, dude, you got to make an Instagram. Yeah. Okay. I was like, all right, cool. So finally, after they pride and pride, I made an Instagram. I posted and I noticed people were really liking it. You know, they were, they were, they were like my posts um, and whatnot. And uh, anyway, this one time I went to this rodeo in Bismarck, North Dakota. And um, sorry, one, uh, this one time I went to this rodeo in Bismarck, North Dakota. And I remember walking in and these kids wanted to take pictures with me. And I, I'm nobody. Like, I'm just a guy that works out in North yeah, Dakota. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, just flexing because they like, because I was uh -huh. big and whatnot. Then behind them, a few other people were, were waiting to take pictures with me. And before I knew it, about 10 minutes, there was, there was I, I don't want to exaggerate, there's probably about 10 people waiting in line because the other people behind the first person thought that I was somebody famous, but they had so no clue. Lines, yeah. So they were just like, oh, I want to get you a picture like with this a guy. Thumb, like, he's yeah, because important. I stood out with a sore thumb. So that was kind of the first thing of like, huh, maybe I have something that I could use. Did you get into, I want to backtrack a little, after, when, once you turned 18 and got out of high school, were you like really into fitness? Um, yeah, it started. And what got say, you into fitness too? I was wondering what got get started in people because I didn't get into fitness until prison, you know. Yes. So like, what did get you? So into what it? got me in, into fitness was um, was first of all North Dakota, like we were saying, it was cold. All you can do is work and the work out, drink or work out in a gym. Exactly. Yeah, so I was okay. like, well, instead of taking the unhealthy route, I'm just gonna work out, eat healthy, and get big because I did know our family had good genetics. I saw my older brothers; they were big, yeah. so I did. And sure enough, I started growing fast, you know, getting big, getting stronger, and um, Anyway, and then that happened, but then that wasn't the only thing. And then this gets crazier. And I made it, I don't know if you remember bodybuilding.com. Yeah. Remember when that was like huge? I mean, it's still a thing, but it's I not I just know the name. As, I don't know if it was big because I wasn't into bodybuilding. Yeah, so they then. made a body space. It was kind of like the first fitness app. Okay. And I made a body space because that's kind of where everybody went who was into fitness. And um, I made one and I was posting on it, you know, very consistently. I've always been consistent in everything I do, whether That's it's good. my marriage, my business, my social media. Clearly why you're successful. Consistency is the key. Yep. And, uh, and then I, I checked my DMs and it's a producer from the WWE. And I, and I was like, oh, you know, like this, this isn't real. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. How, how much are you weighing at this time? I you was know? big. big. So big. this is about when I got my biggest. I was probably 265, 270. <laughs> I think I even got to 272. This is when they were reaching out because, you know, WWE likes big dudes. Yeah. And I'm young. I said that's Brock Lesnar's size. 24, 25 years old. Oh, my god. Yeah. Just and so I was like, well, I'll respond just in case this really is because maybe it is. And I responded and then right away phone call from California. And I'm thinking, shoot, maybe this is, maybe this is legit. Yeah. Sure enough. Hey, this is DJ Feldman. Uh, you know, I'm a producer for the WWE, and we're we're looking to cast some uh, some guys on WWE Tough Enough for season seven coming up, wow. or maybe it was season five. I can't remember. Don't okay. quote me on that. But uh, it was a season in 2015. It was actually the last season they did. They did. They haven't done one since. Wow. 
And I was like, heck yeah. Um, you know, is this legit? And I actually kept asking him and testing him. Are you sure this is legit? Cause uh -huh. I got so many scam For offers sure. and we all do. You still get five or 10 a day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So you got to decipher which is real and which is not. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it was real. They flew me down to Orlando. I got to compete on WW tough enough. I was eliminated, but that's when it kind of motivated me to let's get out of North Dakota Yeah. because if the WWE is reaching out and from it, North Dakota, from too. North Imagine Dakota, you exactly. State then I need to go somewhere where there's more exposure. Um, I don't want to go California route. It's a How mess out there. How did even find you from North Dakota? Well, the, the body space. So wow, this right. is another point I want to bring up is social media. It's like advertising yourself. It's the best way. I've never had an agent for any of the TV shows I've, I've got on. It's really? always just for my social media. Yeah. It's kind of like your portfolio in a it's way. It's a business card almost. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I would encourage anybody who wants to really get their name out, like what you're doing, Yeah. just put, keep consistent on social media. Consistently and it will, posting, yep. yep. It will and it gets, it, trust me, it gets boresome. And then if you get a post that gets no trash or a few in a row and you're just like, it's okay. oh, I'm not doing this. Yeah. yeah, but you gotta keep doing it. It's hard. It's keep just like in through. the gym, man. You're not yeah. gonna get big your first workout. <laughs> Absolutely. One good meal isn't gonna make you fit. Just like one bad meal isn't gonna make you fat. For you sure, know? yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's get into the move from Arizona. So you just have that uh, WWE thing and then... Yep, and then that's about when I moved, a year after that I moved down here because I'm, things were kind of blown up because then that snowball, somebody else sees you on TV and they're like, hey, we would... Then I had an offer to shoot for this, um, this kid's video where I was a superhero. It was kind of low budget, but it yeah. was something. You yeah. know, they paid well. They paid very well. Uh, that was in Atlanta, Georgia. And then, um, and then anyway, and then I was like, all right, so let's make the move. So we talked about it. We were obviously excited going from yeah. North Dakota to Arizona. Yeah. So we moved down we go here, outdoors man. and stuff. We, yep, we got a U-Haul, moved down here, and um, no and plans on what you were gonna do other than just gonna figure it out on the fly and <laughs> and move to Scottsdale, correct? Pretty or no? much, we had a little bit of a plan. My plan was to continue to do my tile installation down here because uh -huh. I know, obviously, down here it's hot. Everybody's doing tile. There wouldn't be any issues with that. Um, which you know, I'm I'm glad I looked into that because now I just blowing up. There's yeah. so much tile work. Seems like it. But also, um, I just knew that with what I was getting, the offers I was getting, and you know, kind of where everything was going, I knew something was gonna happen. Well, sure enough, I moved down here, and within the I first- you just bet on yourself, yeah. Yeah, first few months, um, this, uh, I went to the expos around here locally. Okay. That's good exposure. And you know, obviously a lot of companies are like, hey, you know, you repping a, a clothing company, or would you be interested? And so I, you know, you kind of just start small. So I started with this smaller um, t-shirt company, Authentic Life Apparel, okay. and um, they were paying me a little bit per month. So that was kind of a little bit of income I was making. Yeah. And then it went from that to a uh, protein supplement um, company to eventually Bang Energy, Barbell Apparel. Yeah, you know, the Bang's big, big, man. The big ones, yeah. And just over time, you know, and that's well, kind of how How long it have you worked. been with Bang now? What's that? How long have you been with Bang now? I've been with Bang since I believe 2017. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So how was the first move to Arizona at first? It was good. It was hot. I always remember the first time that I was moving into this house. It was my aunt's house in Gold Canyon. Uh -huh. okay. I remember we were so hot. It was like 11 p.m. We're moving all our stuff out of the U-Haul. You know, we wanted to get to bed. We'd been traveling. Is that your first time realizing that even at 11 p.m. Dude, in the summer, it's yes, 100 degrees yes. still almost? Yes, and it was over 100. Yeah, yeah. And we're just drenched. So we go in. We're like, oh, we're just going to get some water. Yeah. And so I turn on the, the water, and it's hot. Like, the water is hot. And I'm, like, waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm thinking, wait, I don't think the water's going to get cold. And then, and then the neighbor over is like, yeah, man. You're not going to get any hot. cold water. He's like, here. And he gave me some some cold water out of his cooler. No way. And then that's when I realized, wow, yeah. I really need to <laughs> bring cold water. Because, yeah. yeah, I didn't realize how hot it was. Well, I basically moved from the coldest state. Literally, yeah. Literally the coldest state to literally the hottest state. Yeah, 100%. Two extremes. Completely two yeah. extremes. Yeah. So did you... Um, did everything start flowing in? Or did you ever get into personal training? What were you, were you just doing that solely for an income out here? Or did you ever have to get a full job? No. And what was the wife doing? Yes. So my wife was teaching at the time. So that helped out too. You know, sure. not, you know, teachers don't get paid yeah. a lot, but it paid the bills. Um, but a lot of it was my social media. It was really? my social media, my sponsorships, and then the tile. And that's all I had to do. I never had to get a job. There was times where I was afraid I had to, but I had in my mind, I will not work for somebody else. Now I may I like I would go and help contractors and they would just pay me on the side and yeah. it, we're like you it's know friends. having a boss who's got to clock yes, in and out for yes. so I would do that but I did not want to go to Target and you know work I mean I was just uh, yeah cool so I, I I'm a huge huge obviously clearly fitness working out changed my life it does so much for your mental health it does clearly you make a living out of it and stuff yeah. I mean how much and to this day I mean I think 
me going to the gym in the morning is probably like my biggest like routine part of like getting my day straight because like I get like my meditation through the day that right there. I get all like the stress out. If I yes. like have anxiety or something like that, you just murder yourself at the gym. Talk about, I want to talk about like how beneficial that type of working out lifting is for people, especially yeah. for people in prison that are sitting in the goddamn cell all day long. It gives you something to feel good about, you know? Oh yeah. It's so beneficial. Not a lot of people think it's just physical. Yes. I would say it's more mental, even more than physical for sure. For sure. If you're ever feeling depressed or you hate your life or you're just really down, get out, work out. And, and a lot of times we're dehydrated too. I guess over 80% of Americans are running around dehydrated. Really? I feel like I am. So just try to drink a gallon of water a day and you'll feel just that will make you feel better. Um, but definitely getting your workout in early in the day or even in the night, that'll release those endorphins and you'll feel 10 times better. You'll feel like it's a high after you work out. Yeah, whenever it is, whenever the routine is, like mine's a morning thing, that's how I was in prison, so I always do the mornings. Some people are evenings. I went to the gym with you at noon yesterday yeah. just to go get a lift in. Well, yeah, and and that's the thing is people, it's hard to make it a habit. So I have a statistic here okay. that's very, very interesting. Let's hear it. Um, it says, one 2012 study found that up to 73% of people who set fitness resolutions end up quitting before hitting their targets within the first month. So, and then I was like, so I want to go deeper. And I was like, well, how long does it take to make something a habit? And this is where I was talking about consistency, yeah. whether it's my marriage or my business or, or fitness, going to the gym or posting on Instagram. It says it takes about 66 days to be exact to form um, a habit, to make wow. it automatic. And it says it, it can take anywhere from 18 days to 254 days, but the average is around 60 days. So what, two months? Yeah. So as long, so here's what I tell people. If you're trying to eat healthy, if you're trying to get big, if you're trying to start your business, make something a habit every day. You know, even if it's making your bed to get you to, you know, that's what I'm actually trying to do right now. I'm in the same. I'm trying to make a God, habit bro. of making my own yeah. freaking bed because I just never did. And I'm like, I really need to. We got a baby on the way. I Congrats need to actually be. Thanks, man. I need to be, you know, an example. It's funny for me. I'm going to make my bed. <laughs> I'm single now. I'm in this big ass house for myself. And I'm like, I, yeah. for some reason, it, I've never been one that always whoever I was with made the bed or something. And now it's like, look at it. It drives me nuts. I'm like, it bothers I told me. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. start making my freaking bed now. Dude, I need to so make weird. my bed. Yeah. That's so funny. But I just that. need to make it a habit. And yeah. I can tell that I'm not in the habit because I'll make it. And then the next week I'll make it twice. And then the next week I don't. And it's like, so yeah, long story short, it's just making things into a habit. And the crazier part about that, I'll get into uh, what I think is what I took from that is you say that there are. Um, giving up on the goals within the first month. Yeah. If you're into fitness, you're not even going to see results for a month. No. You know what I mean? So no. you have to be more disciplined to just the routine part of it and know that. And that's probably people's biggest problem is they want to do it and they want these quick results and all that stuff. And it doesn't take time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, yeah. And I still rip apart my body and I've been doing this for, I don't know, who knows, over a decade. You know what I'm saying? I can still rip my body apart. So yeah, yeah. it doesn't happen overnight. And you're just, just like anything in life, it's pushing through the tough times and just being consistent and keep on going. Uh, Jocko Willink and I think Andy Fasella said something really cool the other day. He was saying something about how uh, if I was mo if I worked out every day, I was motivated. I would never work out. I have True. discipline, so the discipline just makes yes. you know you have to work out every day. It's, so there's yes. a big difference between discipline and motivation. Not everybody's motivated every day, but if you yeah. have discipline every day, then you're going to do the stuff you need to do. Correct. You don't go off your feelings. Absolutely. That's and that's a big and, and anything in life. Yes. You don't want to base a lot of things off your feelings because your feelings will manipulate you. Yeah, for sure. So it's those days where you're not feeling motivated. Just go to the gym. And this is why I tell people, even if just say you're really, well, first of all, there's two steps here. So the first step is I do designate one day during the week as my off day. Okay. Because we're all going to have that one day where we literally did just work a ton. We're exhausted. We had a busy day. Um, so sometimes that lands on Wednesday or Thursday, you know, cause it's kind of, you're kind of the middle of the week, you're getting tired yeah, for sure. So then I'm like, you know what, this will be my off day because then I'm not making an excuse of like, Oh, I'll just make up with it. No, like I actually get an off day during the week. But the other thing is you want to make sure that you're actually just going for a little bit. So even if you're really tired and you're not motivated, go for 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. Cause people think, oh, they have to do a full hour, hour and a half. There's a lot of times where I go in and I get a quick half an hour workout in and it feels amazing and I feel great. And it actually, and I feel like I didn't, and I here's the great losing thing too. gains. If you're feeling like you don't wanna work out and you're feeling lazy and you go make yourself go to the gym and do a 20, 30 minute workout, 
I promise you, you're going to feel so much better after that workout. For one, just 100%. knowing the fact that I actually did that shit. Yes. And two, your endorphins are released, so it's doing you its natural thing. You mentally thing. and physically feel better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, Dan and I talk about this all the time. Get in anything, I love that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, shout out to Dan Rockwell. He was supposed to be in the studio today. I'm yeah. excited to, to get to know him as well guy. too. Hey guys, follow him. He's one yeah. of my best buddies. Uh, Dan at Dan Rockwell Fitness. Yeah, and we can actually tag Dan Rockwell right now. We can't tag you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and that's a whole other subject. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll get into I'm that censored. a little later. But I want the show to not get censored. Exactly. So. I won't. I won't bring it up. <clears throat> How good was it? Um, when stuff starts coming in, so like magazines, like Muslim Fitness and stuff, did that start rolling in right away when you got out of here? Or how no, no. Happen? So yeah, the bigger stuff like the Titan Games, yeah. Muscle and Fitness magazines, book covers, commercials, that stuff came in later, um, uh, two, three years ago. Really? Okay. You know, because um, and get into. I want to get into how fulfilling that stuff is when you start getting the calls from Muscle and Fitness and shit it like feels that. You're so like, yeah, it feels great because it's um, now everything you know you you do realize a lot of things are superficial, but it's still really cool seeing that all your hard work is paying off and it validates the fact that i took this move yes. to come out here and do all this stuff yeah like, i knew i'd make this work yep so you just have to stay grounded you yeah. can't you can't let it get to your head that's the main thing that i could see those things kind of getting to my head and then i realized like no this is not who i am i got to realize who i'm not so as long as you're grounded and you know you know who you are and who you aren't yeah it's great it's a great feeling and that's dude i, I want to say again that's pretty uh, it's commendable so you could like be married and go through all that stuff with muscle cover fit you know what i mean all that hard, stuff yeah, and it's yeah. like so sure. if, yeah, if you want to give a shout out to your wife right now, now would be the good time. At Kayla B. Fit, <laughs> she's the best wife ever. No lie. Give her a fall. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, that's cool that she was able to ride all that stuff out with you and, and yeah. doing that stuff. So she, it probably wasn't fun for her, but yeah, she, absolutely. <laughs> but she she's did. a trooper. Yeah. She so is how a was the uh, NBC Titan Games? It was fun. So it's, I think was Matt Cable on that. Do you know? Yes, Matt okay. Cable. There's another guy. So I've had from two Mesa. Titan Games on here. Actually, three from Arizona. There's one from Mesa. Um, Steve. I can't okay. remember his last name. Send him over here. Yeah, Steve, Matt, and I. Which did you would be see what Matt cool. Cable just did recently? Yeah, he yeah. Like he was four doing golds the and three silvers out there, wow. like last week. The transcend guy He's called me and yeah, he killed it. He did like he won like four gold medals and three silvers. And, and, that huge and thing. if nobody knows the story on Matt Cable, he was a three or four times stage three cancer he just survivor. Had, he he just had cancer in 2019, and the doctors told him he had the zero percent chance of living. And he keeps living. And he, he's he will represent the USA for that stuff. See, and this is a good example of your mind. He yes. literally has made up in his mind he will not die from cancer. Absolutely. And he's doing And he made up his mind that he's going to keep working out to push through the yeah. shitty stuff he has in his mind. Yeah. And he, he told me himself it's because he has all that bad shit in his head from what happened and the gym is his stress relief. Well, and think about this. He's he's getting down to 150, 160 and then he'll get back up to like 220. I mean, he this guy's a big dude. Big you know? big dude. Strong. He told me he got out of the hospital and he was working out and he saw the pics in his arm. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. And like within two and a half years now, he's winning those games. And they, the guy told me he's going to the like Invictus games, which is like the, the biggest world games. He's like one of like the favorite dudes because he he's just smoked it. that co competition. Yeah, yeah it's cool. that is so, cool. You got to get him on here for sure. I had Matt Cable on here a month ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. That's why I said you're the second guy from the Titan games. Matt Cable's, oh, his episode was awesome too, okay. man. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. You have to go check it out yeah. for sure. All right. So how was the uh, Titan games? It was so fun, but it's not what you think it is. Um, yeah, I want to hear about all this. And how long did the whole shooting go? Well, that's the thing. So they reach out to you about a year prior to when they actually air it. They want everybody to think it's live. And I can tell these things now because it's in the past. Yeah. But we did sign some, you know, a lot of contracts saying you NDA can't say anything. Yep. Yeah. I did two advice, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But the, the paperwork was about this thick. And I remember thinking, like, there's no way I'm going to be able to read through all this. And what if I sign something where, you know, they own me? They and, own me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. It's true, though. I, uh, so I, I went through the paperwork. I signed everything. I didn't read everything. Um, I probably should have, but I was excited. I was young. Yeah. So that was kind of a weird process because that alone took two, three months. Getting back to contract. Hey, we really? need you okay. to sign this. We need you to fax this. We need copies of this. So that was just three months. And I'm thinking, oh, this isn't going to be easy. I thought you just, hey, you know. <laughs> You're on the show. Here you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's Ready not to like that. Tomorrow. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you got to do these interviews. They want to make sure you have a personality. How, you, how can you talk? Um, then they have you do these tests, these fitness tests, just basic ones, okay. just to make sure, you know, that you know, you know what you're, you're strong as you think exactly. you are. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, you don't want to look like a fool on there. Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, yeah. And anyway, I did all those things and I passed them. They liked me. They said the producers liked me. And um, September, they flew me out for tryouts. And that's that was a blast. We basically did the NFL, what they do with the, in combine. the NFL Combine, very okay. similar, a little bit different, but pretty similar. Forty yard dash, you know. Really? Yeah. Do you remember your forty time? They didn't tell us. Okay. 
They, um, the Rock said that I did really good in the tryouts. Rock? The Rock, okay. yes. He told me that I did very good in the tryouts. But, um, but yeah, it was fun, stressful, nerve wracking. I mean, you know, you know, this is going to be aired on TV, and uh, yeah, you know, The Rock is looking at you. You know, all these producers are. He's there when you're doing this. He was there. I would say half the time. Yeah. But he had to be present because he was talking. He was, you know, kind of running the show. He was For one sure. of the producers. But um, yeah. It was really We're not giving fun. no shout outs to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. He's a hard yeah, worker. Yeah, sure. uh, I, I respect The Rock in that sense for sure. Makes one of us. Yeah, and I appreciate him for putting me on his show. Absolutely, for but, sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, after that goes, then what happens to you? Um, and is that like an, I don't know anything about the show. Is it like an elimination show? Yes. Okay. So basically 100,000 people, they say, applied. Wow. Um, then they, ex then I think around 500 went to tryouts. Okay. I made it in the 500. Then out of the tryouts, they picked 60. Wow. And, and then this is where the story is really cool. Um, it was a long gap. I mean, I think it was September all the way till <clears throat> November or December where I didn't hear anything. You know, I went out to tryouts, I did my thing, and then nothing. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you know, I get a call, and um, this lady, I, she was, I, I believe she was a producer, and she said, hey, we want your wife to film you. We have a little surprise for you. Um, so have her get a camera. And um, we'll give you the phone in five minutes. I said, okay, cool. So then um, Kayla's filming, my wife. And next thing I know, I hear this, this guy. And he said, hey, man. He's like, I just want to say uh, welcome to the Titan Games. We really liked you. We want to fly you out. No um, we way. really think you're perfect for the show. And I was freaking out. And I was like, oh, I appreciate it. And he's like, I was just talking to him like very respectfully, like uh -huh. producer. And he's like, hey, do you, do you know who this is? I was like, I don't think so and then he's like this is Dwayne Johnson man shut up Rock. he called you yes no way <laughs> I have it on my Instagram I felt silly because who would think Dwayne Johnson is gonna call you yeah and it wasn't him from his cell phone you know yeah. obviously but I'll say we got that number still yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that was really a surprise and then I freaked out you know and then you're like holy shit this is oh, the yeah. real deal and this is the real deal and then I get but that's the thing man I was young how nervous were you on the uh, TV I was so and lifting nervous tell so me about nervous. that seriously I mean, I was sweating. Yeah. <laughs> profusely. Like every day, just what? Like, what were you most nervous about? The TV or the fact the Rock was there, or the fact you were gonna screw up one of the competitions? I think, I think this is what it is. I was the most nervous about losing on national television, which I did. And uh, real quick, I want to just make a point. It just shows, like, even you on TV, like we all like you got to fight through the doubts in your head. You know what I'm saying? Like I have a hundred battles in my head every single day. Like no joke, driving to the gym, whether it's like I want to go or not go, it's like winning the little battles in your head because no matter what the cock is doing in the world we're all insecure down down underneath you know what i'm saying we all nobody wants to fail but it's like it's believing in yourself over the fact that you're scared for your ego is what is what i, I would totally say is the biggest agree. point there you know what i'm saying yep. if that makes sense to you no it does i have actually failed i tell people this i have failed more times than i've won yes so i've never actually gotten on a cover of a fitness magazine i've been in a magazine I've never won a TV show. Maybe we'll show. get you on after this thing yeah. after a while. <laughs> I've never won a TV show. I've just been on a TV yeah. show. I lost another TV show. Um, you know, I have failed so many times, but that's what's kind of cool because then it allows you to, to progress, to work harder. And I think failing is very important. You know, I think if you're not failing, you're not doing it right, yeah. in my opinion. And you could look at it like this. It's I always say this. It's like the as cliche as it sounds, the glass half full or half empty. Yeah. It's like... Do you, am I mad that I didn't win a TV show or do I look at it like, hell, I was on a TV show? Correct. And that's, and that's what a lot of people would tell me. I had great support. You know, when I was getting down on myself, they're like, no, dude, they're like, you got on that show, which yeah. is a big achievement. I'm like, yeah, that's true. You know, so you have to really switch your mindset. Like you said, Just you got to work through those like, obstacles. Yeah. 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 And people that are like, think they're inferior. They are, they, we have it all figured out. None of us have it all figured out. You know what I'm saying? Like John Mallott, who's as big no, as it gets. If you ask no, me, he's man. coming up here. He's telling me he's like nervous driving to my show. Like thinking he's going to screw up the podcast. And I'm like. And even then it clicked for me. I was like, holy shit, even you still have those thoughts, you know? Wow. And it's like, but when you hear some people like that, that you look up to and they have the same thoughts in your head, like we're all the same. We all have the same freaking yeah. thoughts. Some of us just choose to not listen to those thoughts and keep pushing forward. And other people choose to fold for them. Yeah. That's I, how it is. And you know, what's helped me as I remember <clears throat> reading Tony Robbins, it's called a note from a friend book. Mm -hmm. It's by the way, it's like this, this thin, you could read it in a couple hours. Okay. I would highly, that sounds like a book I could actually read. Dude, I would highly is recommend there pictures reading in it. it? It is, it is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he says this, and this actually helped me a lot. So he asks when, you know, hey, aren't you nervous for this? Or, or, and he says, you have to switch the, the words around. So you don't say, no, I'm nervous for this. I'm exhilarated. 
I'm excited anxious, because it yeah. says as soon as you say, oh, I'm nervous, well, then you're going to your, mind, goes your mind. If you change it and you trick your mind into thinking I'm exhilarated, I'm excited. I've done that. Like in the TV show, I kept saying, I'm not nervous. I'm excited, yeah. you know, because he's like, why do we think that that feeling is nervousness? Maybe that's excitement. Let's switch our mindset to excitement. That's and he one. has this list of these words not to use. And it's funny because the other day I came across this YouTube video of Tony Romo. He's a broadcaster, play yeah. by play on, uh, I believe it's Sunday Night Football. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, or yeah, with Jim Nance. Yep. But um, they asked and they said, were you really nervous when you were first had to do your first play by play? And he said, I was exhilarated. And I remember thinking, no okay, way you're thinking like this dude has the same life coach this, as me. I was <laughs> like, this dude, well, and you start to notice that a lot of these very, very successful people, they will respond in a way where if I hadn't read that book or gone through what I've gone through, I'd be like, why did he say that? Like, that sounds really weird. Yeah. Because he's been reading, he's successful, he knows, you know, how to switch his mindset. Mm -hmm. And that was his answer. And I thought, ah, that's really interesting. That is a really good one. Yeah. So what did you, where did you go after the Titan games now? Um, so basically I went, um, your journey fascinates me. I just, I love the whole fitness thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just kept doing the fitness thing. And then actually I believe that's when I did get the uh, muscle and fitness magazine after shoot. from that show. Yes. After from that show. And, um, and that's another reason why I have to stay fit all the time. I mean, I want to, but it's very important because this was a last minute thing. Yeah. Um, uh, Pern is his name. Uh, Pern, he's a great photographer for muscle and fitness. Okay. He calls me and he says, hey, Davey, I'd like to shoot you in a week for this magazine. And, and I was like, well, what magazine? He's like, this is for muscle and fitness. And I was like, oh, snap, muscle and fitness is big. Yeah. And I thought, okay. Well, I looked and I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready. I mean, I look okay. So I worked my butt off for that week. I drank a ton of water. In a week you had to do it? Yep, low carbs. Um, I depleted my water, you know, up to the day of the shoot. I had high sodium the last day. I mean, there's a lot of tricks you can do uh -huh. to help. Because a week, I mean, you have to be in a good shape to get really magazine shape in a week. For sure. And I got lucky because I was in decent shape. But, um, but yeah, that was the thing that I did after the Titan Games. And then that was kind of the last big one. Because really? then 2020 hit. Everything shut down. Um, I want to get into that a little bit, too. I don't want to touch crazy politics. But yeah, I, yeah, what yeah. I do like is... For someone like you whose social media is their living and you choose to share what's right and true for like, not our people, but like our country and stuff, um, rather than worrying about it costing you money. And I want to get into that and how you choose that, you know, especially. Yeah, yeah. And then does your wife give you a hard time with it? Because I think if I was married, she'd probably tell me, stop posting that shit. Well, she's very good at that because she has the same, kind of the same mindset as myself. Of course, or you would yeah. be married to her. And she, I think a lot of us were getting frustrated. And I won't get into the details. I'll kind of I'll kind of uh, talk about this like Aaron Rodgers does, yeah. you know. But um, I just wanted people to think for themselves, you know. And also, I'm into health. I'm a very healthy individual. And I just knew that something was a little off from the beginning. And so I wanted people to just know hey, you can think this way, you can have free... Just look into it. Look into it, have free speech. And anyway, I did that. And I at, honestly, at that point, man, I really didn't care because I, I thought if I lose my account, I lose my account. At least I can help people, you know, think for themselves, wake up, to know true health. Because, I mean, this is... In some cases, this could have been life or death situation. For sure. Still can be. And it still can be. And, and in my book... Um, and that's why I tell people, the people that were getting mad at me, it's like, I'm not doing this to benefit me at all. Like this literally doesn't benefit me at all. If, if anything, it hurts everything. Absolutely. My That's business, my point. My social media. Yeah. It was, it just, I, I don't know. It's just, I just wanted to help people out. That's all it was. Wow. I didn't gain anything from it. If oh, anything, absolutely. I lost sponsorships. I Top lost by money. Far. What was your wife's thoughts deleted. on it? Did she not want you to post or was she like? Well, no, she, she liked what I was doing. She respected it. Now, obviously at the end of the but day. But here's the deal. Us, we, guys are more, we'll fly off the seat of our pants. We'll figure yeah. out money. I'll figure this out. You know what I'm saying? More, wives are more planned. So like, yeah. I just wonder, was she like, yo, this is our income right here. Maybe you do need to tone down a little bit. Was that not I mean, even we the case? Have, so she I, just trusts you anyway. She trusted me. She's good at that. But, um, you know, I've always been, I've always been financially stable. Yeah. So, um, I did make sure we could pay for our bills and whatnot. But I mean, there was a point there when I didn't have my account and I was doing the Turo stuff and the cars were getting ruined and I was getting no tile jobs and it was getting you still have really the cars hard. on Turo? 
I have one car. Okay. Yep, I have an SUV. Okay. But nice. I, I ran it out of Hellcat. Not a yeah. good idea. <laughs> yeah. And the Z06 you had? Uh, the Z06 was fine. Okay. Uh, people people took care of that. Really? The Hellcat got stolen, uh, drifted, ruined. No way. Yeah, my SUV was actually seized in Mexico. So that's another thing. Okay, we won't talk politics, but I can tell this: our borders are a mess. The guy literally took my SUV to Mexico, brought seven illegal, you know, immigrants back in, and then it got he got you know obviously taken and then my vehicle got seized so that was a nightmare wow unreal i actually bought it from mark kia yes yeah yeah, shout out to mark (laughs) kia with a nice telly right out here yeah anybody needs a whip at mark kia hit me up too there you go that's so funny yeah that's actually how and just to show you how i always preach how i get out there and i don't care about talking to dudes and i'm known for picking up dudes (laughs) yeah i ran into i had already followed davey at mark kia and this was actually funny that we just shared yesterday and i saw him in the lobby and he just bought a z06 corvette and I, of course, approached you because it's what I do. And I knew, I was like, yo, hey, I'm Dave. I, I knew you're Davey Michael, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm a fan and this and that. Um, you had actually followed me after that. And then a year later, I leave that job and I'm pursuing this new dream. And now you're literally sitting across from me at my studio when we had just met at my old car dealership and I was a finance manager. How crazy is that? Because I can see when people are, I can see people who have the same mindset, the same drive. Um, I can just tell you, you're, you're already going to make it. You know, you just got to stick with it. Appreciate that. So, yeah. yeah and I, that goes, and that's not just for me. That goes for anybody. Anybody. You can make it. You just got to stick with it. It's like, all I the just mindset. refuse to quit could, on shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's the only thing. I can tell it's your mindset. So if I see that person with their mindset, they don't even have to, it doesn't matter how they look. Uh, you know, you just have to be, respe- you know, you have to be respectful toward, towards people, a hard worker, and you have to have that mindset. And you, you can literally ach- achieve almost anything you want as long as you stick with it. Yeah, and have discipline. You know, and have discipline. I yes. love that. Yep. What is what is next is planned for you right now? That's a really good question. Right now, honestly, with the baby coming and whatnot. And when's the baby due? December. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking about, I'm kind of slowing it down. I'm not stopping or anything. I'm going to stay fit, you know, keep posting my bang videos. But uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of put everything on hold. Okay. Um, Hollywood's not the same anymore. I call it Holly weird. Oh, weird. For <laughs> sure. You know, I kind of watch movies anymore. Yeah. Like, seriously, I yeah. can't. I kind of gave up on that. I, yeah. I was starting to get into it, and I was getting, you know, parts and uh, whatnot. And I just, I said, I can't do this. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes out there. For sure. Yeah. So I decided not to pursue that. So I think I'm just going to keep pursuing my fitness. Um, okay. I want to, you know, put my family first now because I had my years of doing all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I guess just kind of slow down. What about the next few years? What kind of goals do you have? So I would say in five years, um, I want to build, I don't know if you've heard of a, of a Barn Dominion. Mm-mm. So Barn Dominion is really cool. It's basically, you can, you can build this big shed, but it's a shed inside of a house. And I want to build it in the middle of nowhere. So I already have bought in two acres of land. I don't want to tell where because I want a place where nobody knows where I live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I already bought two acres of land, and I'm going to build a Barn Dominion on that. So right now, I'm just basically putting all my energy into that. And then... Um, and then after that, I probably will try to try to pursue maybe some TV shows again, because I really really liked and maybe a bodybuilding show. Everybody really want a lot of people. Have you want, ever done one? I did one. Okay. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. How'd I you did, do? I did. I did well. Um, I won the novice and then the heavyweight. Okay. Yeah, and it was my first uh, out here. No, it was in Minneapolis. Okay. Because North Dakota doesn't have any, yeah. so I had to go out to Minneapolis. Um, but I did well on that, and I think that's why I haven't done one since. Because I won those two classes, and then you're kind of, well, where do what I do go now? now? Yeah. Yeah. But I would like to do one, you know, again, just to just for fun. Okay. It helps you lean up. It helps you eat cleaner. Yeah. It, it helps you set a goal. It helps you force discipline on yourself even more. If you're Agreed. Not, if, even Agreed. if you're disciplined, it just it makes yes. it like black and white discipline. Because sometimes you can get too caught up in the routine. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah. What is, uh, like, uh, what do you want your legacy to be known for? Like, what's the, what do you, like, 10 or 20 years, what do you want Davey Michael to be known yeah, for? Yeah, I just, for a person who, um, who has integrity, uh, basically who treats everybody nice, you know, I think we need more nice people in this world. Absolutely. So I would say those Dude, two. you're nice as shit, too. Like, it's crazy. Like, he's, it's like, I'm clearly, people say I'm a teddy bear until you piss me off, but like, you're like, just so nice and genuine. It's like, how the <laughs> fuck are you so big and nice? It's just, I, I'm one it's of those cool guys though, but I like that, you know? Where I'm really, really, really nice. And then finally, there's that one time where it's like the last straw and 
Lord be with whoever that is. And I just blow up. I it only happens on like every year or every two years. Oh, I wish I could say that. But, <laughs> I might have one driving home today. Yeah, I, I can I can get to that point. I really try hard not to. Yeah. yeah. And dude, I'm having a, And that's like the biggest thing I work on right now besides making my bed is like that stuff. Like looking at the glass half full and not yeah. getting mad about stupid shit, you know, but like. And that's what a lot, I'm talking to a lot of dudes from prison right here if they're hearing this too. It's like, I, sometimes I can forget where I come from and how bad my life used to be. Yeah. And I could let something, some dude cut me off my car and like I get so enraged and mad. I'm like, and that's, what the hell yeah. am I tripping on? You know what I'm it's saying? So it's so silly like, because there's people literally starving. Yes. In, I mean, well. Over, and I'm driving a car that's literally yeah. bigger than my prison cell yeah, yeah, to yeah. live in. You know what I mean? Like 50, I should be chilling. 52% of Americans don't even have $1,000 in their bank account. Wow. Okay. That's a statistic you can Google right now. Really? Yes. Okay, so now let's look at other countries, and then here, and this is kind of how I, why I have a good attitude, and you know why I try to be nice. I mean, I, I have so many blessings that if I were to be mean about somebody, you know, cut me off because I get the same feeling, or just you know, oh, I hate it because it's so hot here, you know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> those are su such silly things to get mad. Absolutely, about. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Mindset again perspective yeah for sure you have okay to have a good perspective last thing i want you to do drop yeah. some game to whether it's some people in prison or people are thinking about getting into the fitness industry just one last little piece of advice because here's here's one thing with your you got a smartphone nowadays dudes that are jacked in prison you can get out and start doing the fitness because that's that's like a thing 100 you know? i feel like a lot of these prison dudes are starting to do that thing now yes. so you can do anything you're not limited because you're a felon and uh just one little last piece of advice for the people right here bro last piece of advice set a five-year goal okay um, I would say, honestly, guys, if you're looking to just really make that next level up, set a five-year goal. Uh, you can set short-term goals. That's great. But a five-year goal, really, it, 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 it makes things realistic. Um, that's at least what I do. You know, f five years ago, I told myself, I want to look like this, you know? And then... Um, you did it. I did it. And then I remember back when I was 20 to 25, I said, I kind of want to look almost close to Arnold's build. And I got really close. I didn't look like Arnold. Arnold's, you know, one yeah. of a kind. But I wanted to get to that size. Yeah. So I feel like setting five-year goals is a really, really good thing because it also doesn't allow you to give up because if you set a short-term goal, a month or two months, you do it, you achieve it, and then you, like, now what? you drop off. Yeah. Yeah. If you set a five-year goal, you know, and you get a year down, That's two really years down, point. you're like, okay, I still have three years. I still got to get to this. And then once you get that five-year Mark, then you say, okay, I'm going to set another five-year goal. What would it want to be? My, this next five-year goal was I wanted to build up my neck and traps. So I had built up everything except for pretty much my neck and traps. So from 30 now to 35, I have set it to where I literally want my neck and traps look like Stephen Austin or, or Goldberg. <laughs> I didn't and, know the neck was a thing to work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I have. I've been working out my neck, and, and, I, and I believe in – you know, three more years, I'll probably get there if I stay consistent. <laughs> you right. got trapped, bro. You're, you're, it's taken now. <laughs> trap city. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, trap city. Um, well, all right. Thank you for being here, Davey. What another awesome episode. I love bringing in the fitness stuff and mental health stuff. Shout out to my boy, Mike Spankenberg at State 48. Send me some more hats, bro, please. And uh, I love you guys. Stay tuned for next week and have an awesome week. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe wherever you get your podcast and leave us some feedback. We would love to know what you think. You can find everything discussed in this episode and more in our show notes below or petermeyeroff.com. I am Peter Meyerhoff and you've been listening to the Roll Call with Chappie podcast.